What's up and welcome to the channel. My name is Hexshot and thank you guys for joining us. If this looks a little bit different, it is a little bit different. Me and the wife finally bought our first house and now we are able to record rain or shine. Uh, no more ambient noises. Some of you guys actually like that. Uh, it was a editing nightmare though. Frogs and crickets and squirrels humping and all of the above is finally gone and we are in a controlled environment. Now, keep in mind, we're still trying to get things worked out with uh, artificial lights and all that kind of stuff. So uh, bear with us, but I think everything looks pretty good. Please let me know how everything looks and sounds. I really depend on you guys uh, for that sort of thing. But as of right now, everything looks good. Different setting, but same style. And what we have today, the P365, the Glock 43, and the M&P Shield all in one video. And we're gonna duke it out right here, compare the three guns. All right, so what are we gonna talk about in this video? We're gonna talk about everything. How these guns carry, how they shoot, features, breakdown, shooting of course, price and value, pros and cons, and our overall favorite and why. So let's go ahead and get into some of the features, basically what makes these guns unique. Obviously all of these guns are aimed at concealed carry. The first one, M&P Shield, probably, well, most definitely the oldest one on the table, but still very relevant. Now, this is the original Shield. There is an M2.0 version, which has some, uh, some upgraded features, and we'll talk about that a little bit too. But on the Shield, you have a, a single stack gun, seven round flush magazine, and then you have an eight round extended, okay? One more round gives you a little bit more to hold on to. You have all of your controls on the left side of the gun, slide stop. This one does have a manual safety. It's very passive though if you don't want to use it or just get the version without the safety if that's not something you're into. Metal sights that are adjustable for, uh, for windage right there and you can see they're dovetailed in and they are metal sights which is really nice. Peephole up top, you can see your brass down in the chamber. Overall just a very uh, sleek m and It's like a, a slimmed down m and and there's really not a whole lot different. Now this gun, believe it or not, kind of started the upgrade in the triggers and in the regular production line M&Ps, uh, this gun really started it all. And we will talk about the triggers, of course, uh, here in a minute, or really after the shooting part of the review. That's when we'll talk about them. You have a really slick kind of grip here. Not my favorite, but the M2.0 made it a lot more aggressive. Um, and if that's something you want to go with, it's not that much more money and it might be worth it. But this is the base gun. Um, and it is still very, very comparable to the rest of them. So that's pretty much the features on the M&P Shield that really make it stand out. Glock 43, this gun was hot a couple of years ago, and uh, a lot of people own this gun and carry it every single day. You're gonna lose a round. When you go from here to here, you now have a six round uh, flat base plate, and then you have a six round extended. So you're gonna get more to hold on to with this extended base plate, but you're not gonna go up in rounds. So if that means anything to you. And this is, like I said, the first single stack Glock nine millimeter uh, plastic sights, just like your regular Glock sights, drop in the bucket type of sights. Uh, there you go. And just like with any Glock, everything is really toned down. Minimal controls all the way around. Your magazine release is not reversible on this gun. It looks like it would be, but it is not. Uh, all the controls are on the left side and none of the Glocks come with a safety. So if you want a safety, this is gonna be your only option on this table that you can actually get one with the, sh with the safety and the M&P shield. None of the rest of them come with that. There's not any kind of uh, accessory rails or anything like that. So what a lot of companies have done like Streamlight, they basically will do like a trigger guard mounted type of uh, light or laser if that's something that you wanna carry. So minimal design, just like any other Glock, kind of. And we'll talk about that in a minute when we talk about the triggers. And then new to the block is the P365. The big difference with this gun is it is a 10 round magazine, okay? So six, seven, 10. This holds the same exact rounds as the Glock 43's big brother and the Glock 26. Uh, yet it is skinny like the shield and the 43 which is nice now this is the flat base plate you also have your extended base plate which does not add rounds but gives you a little bit more 
to hold on to there. Now this one's loaded with features. It has the x-ray sight straight from the factory right there. If you can tell that bright green dot just sticks out really, really nice. Uh, tritium in the rear, it is blacked out. So it does come with nice sight straight from the factory. All the controls again are on the left side of the gun. Slide stop, take down lever, magazine release, a very aggressive type of grip texturing on this one. Uh, and man, it really locks in your hand. This is something I'm big on. We're in South Carolina. We're sweating our balls off nine months out of the year at least. And when you start shooting, that's something that you will appreciate for sure. No manual safety. And this one does have a, a proprietary rail. So you could uh, run some attachments on there if you wanted to. These smaller guns, you know, to me it's not really necessary. But if you wanted to do that, you definitely could. A little bit of a finger groove. Uh, yeah, kind of, you really can't call it that, but uh, just a little indentation really in the grip. On the MMP shield, I do want to show you a close up of this grip texturing. It looks like it might be kind of aggressive, but it really is not at all. It's a very slick grip, and uh, during the shooting, you'll see how that could be a little bit of an issue. And the Glock 43 really isn't that much better. They call this the rough texturing grip. Uh, not really anything rough about it. Uh, you do have a few more points of contact where, it, where it, it stays in your hand a little bit better than the shield for sure. All right, now let's talk about how they carry real quick. I get this question a lot, which is natural. I deal with a lot of, uh, you know, concealed carry guns and everything like that. So anytime anybody asks me from here on out, the holster I like to carry is Tolster. We've been working with these guys for a very long time. And this to me is just the best holster. I don't like a lot of extra material around a small gun. Look, when you carry a small gun, you are sacrificing a few things. The biggest one is capacity. I don't wanna buy a small gun and then have a bunch of extra material around that gun because now I'm just, I'm just losing the whole benefit of a smaller gun, okay? So this is what I like to carry. Very minimal, adjustable cant, soft loops or the quick clips. Uh, exposed magazine release, which I've talked about several times. I, I like that. You have nothing to worry about with it falling out or the magazine accidentally falling out. Uh, this is what I like to carry. It keeps your package small, and that is a good thing. Uh, rarely is that a good thing, but in this case, I promise you, it's a good thing. This is our holster choice, it's holster all the way around, very minimal. We'll get those out of the way. Universal magazine carriers. They have a bunch of different things. Uh, I don't like a drawer full of holsters. I've tried a bunch of them and that's what I like. Okay, as far as that. Now, how these guns carry, they are very similar. I mean, really, they're all skinny guns inside the waistband. This is going to affect uh, how much your pants actually are pushed out. All right, um, not the biggest dimension, but you can see right there, they're very comparable very close to each other if we put the p365 up here again even though this is a 10 round gun uh it still is a very skinny gun inside the waistband now i'm going to throw some size and and specs maybe a few things up there if you guys want to see all the specs make sure you check out our individual reviews on these guns as well but they're all really close and in, in, in weight and all that kind of stuff each one of them carries very well. Where you will see a difference, hopefully actually you'll never see a difference in this, but what really matters with these guns because they all really do just carry very well is the round count, okay? From six to 10, okay? You have a pretty big jump there. It doesn't sound like a lot, but you're, you're talking about a, a pretty significant difference when it comes to these kinds of guns or seven with one in the chamber and 11 with one in the chamber. We always recommend doing that and being safe, of course, but uh, you have a pretty big jump from four, three rounds, uh, three to four rounds with these kind of guns is very good, but they all carry well. You just want to get a good gun belt and a good holster inside the waistband carry is our preferred choice. It's the quickest uh, for us and I think it is the best option. So they all carry very well. What about the way they shoot? Of course, we will do a shooting part of the review just to kind of give you an idea. Um, and we'll talk about that afterwards. Uh, size, weight, and capacity. We kind of touched on that a little bit. Uh, the size of the guns is very, very comparable to each other. So we'll put the P365 on top because it is a very small gun. You can tell right here in the front, it's a little bit shorter. 
and it's a little bit shorter in the grip and in the barrel there. What SIG did with this gun is they designed it around the magazine. They didn't design the gun and then put a magazine in it. They designed this whole thing around the magazine. You can tell how it tapers right in this area. It's kind of wide down here. It's kind of one and a half stack and then it leads into a single stack. It's a, it's a really neat design and I'll be honest with you, with the single stacks on, that are on the market now, they'll probably still do really well. But with the P365 and the amount of rounds they were able to get out of this small little gun, I think more and more companies are gonna start going to that, uh, that particular model. Other companies will figure it out and, and kind of you know squeeze more and more rounds out of these things for sure. We'll put the Glock 43 on top of the shield here. And you can tell the Glock 43 is just a little bit shorter in the grip. And they're about the same length in, in barrel length and all that. So these guns are, are very close in size. And then if we do the same thing with the P365 on top of the Glock 43, nothing scientific about this at all, but you can tell the Glock 43 is a little bit longer in the grip. Doesn't mean anything as far as that dimension. And they're almost identical in grip length. All right, what about price and value? Because this is where it starts to get a little bit more spread out. The MMP shields have always been a value-based gun, okay? 300 bucks, 325 bucks. Most of the time, if you do a little bit of shopping around, you can get these guns through Smith & Wesson, lifetime warranty, two magazines. This is the best value on the table, hands down. So if you're on a tight budget, uh, I see no reason with you not going with that with the shield. It's just awesome, especially the M2.0 version. Glock 43, when these first came out of the gate, they were six and seven hundred dollars, and that is no lie. Now everything's calmed down. You can get these most of the time for four and a quarter, four hundred to four hundred and fifty bucks, let's just say. And the P365 was really no different than the Glock 43 when it first came out. People were like, "Oh my God, the the, the size." of the gun, the, the, the round count, this is amazing. They were very hard to find uh, for a lot of people and they were 550, 600 bucks easily right out of the gate. Now 450 to 500 bucks. So it definitely is the most expensive option on the table and some people just don't have that. I mean, you're talking about the MP Shield at 300 bucks, you can get yourself a Tulsa holster with the discount code, of course, make sure you use that, a gun belt, and some ammo probably for the same price of the p365 but this gun does have some benefits uh, that we will get to very shortly i promise you that now one thing i didn't mention as far as on the p365 it does have the front slide serrations so if you like to do press checks or anything like that it's going to give you a little bit more to hold on to as opposed to the glock 43 or even the original shield uh, it's very slick like that the M2.0 actually, they do put little small serrations on the front. They don't go all the way to the top, but you do have a little bit more to bite onto with the M2.0. All right, so let me show you how these things break down. We'll do a little bit of shooting. Then when we come back, we'll do triggers and pros and cons. So on the Glock, pretty straightforward. Drop the mag, make sure it's clear. Pull the trigger, lock the slide to the rear, pull it off dual captive recoil spring, polymer guide rod. On the shield, drop the mag, make sure it's clear, lock the slide to the rear, rotate your lever down, pull the trigger, and it comes off. Dual captive rod, guide rod again, and a uh, metal guide rod. And then the P365, drop the mag, make sure it's clear, lock it back, rotate this down, slide comes off dual captive recoil spring, and a metal guide rod. So internally, they're pretty much all the same. I don't have to break them down from here. You guys kind of get it, but they all, they all look very similar on the internals. The SIG does have uh, uh, metal rails here. It just extends further out where the other two kind of have, you can see your points of contact there. And then on the shield, they do have a little bit beefier rails uh, right there. So a little bit different, but, but not too much. Now the SIG, whenever you put this one back together, you want to push up on the slide stop and rotate the lever down. Otherwise, it won't let you get the slide all the way on there. Line up the slide, lock it back, 
rotate it, you're good on the M and P. Push this one straight back. You gotta make sure that you get it lined up all the way. Just like that. Rotate it. You're good. And then the Glock. Just like that. Okay? So let me take you guys to the range with us. We'll show you how they shot. Then when we come back, we'll talk about pros and cons. We'll look at those triggers and our overall thoughts on these three firearms. We'll see you guys in a minute. So Mrs. Heck shot with the shield, Mrs. Heck shot with the SIG P365, and with the Glock 43, just for reference. So as a comparison, here are my shots. That is the shield, Glock 43, and the P365. My Glocks, my, my shots with Glocks always open up. But for self-defense purposes, um, all three of these would be definitely acceptable. All right, so day two of our three-gun comparison. The SIG P365, the Glock 43, the M&P shield. Two uh, extremely hot concealed carry pistols uh, of course I want to take we actually have enough shooting footage for the video but I definitely want to run the p365 some more there's still reports of people having issues and before we put this review out I just want to make sure that this gun is running good so we're gonna take shots with all three guns and uh, let's see how it does here
All right, the MMP shield. Now you see me fumble around with that a little bit. This is a problem I've had with this gun in the past is when it's hot, it's humid. We're in South Carolina. This is how it is most of the time. The grip texturing on this gun is so slick and I talk about this a lot, but it's very important. It's so slick and humid and her hands are sweating that the gun just tends to, to ride out of my hand a little bit. I don't know if other people have that issue. If you do, let make sure you leave us a comment down below, let us know. But the new M&P shield actually fixes a lot of that issue. Uh, so just something I wanted to point out there. And now the Glock 43, another popular option. Another slick grip as well. Let's see how it does. A little bit better stays in my hand a little bit better anyway so mrs take shots gonna load up and she's gonna take some shots and we'll see what she thinks All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Each one of these guns for self-defense purposes uh, is an amazing shooter. And if you do your part, uh, I would feel confident carrying any of these guns. One thing I noticed shooting, and this is something that, that's been a big gripe of mine on the original shield, but not so much on the M2.0 at all, is this grip texturing really does not do you a whole lot of justice when it's sweating and it's 100 degrees outside. It really starts to slip out of your hand a little bit and I kind of showed that in the in the video a little bit I just do not like that grip at all uh, and, and it feels just a little bit awkward you got to adjust your hands adjust your grip don't like that but grip tape or buying the m2.0 version if you don't have one can easily remedy that but it is definitely something that I want to point out the Glock 43 to me is seems to be the snappiest out of all of them at the range uh, you do have that one less round but any of these guns, when you take them to the range, what, what I really like about these guns is that all they are, although they are single stacks, they do very well at the range. So it's not like if your buddy calls you and says, hey man, you wanna go shooting and this is the only gun that you have, you feel like you're gonna just have a horrible time. I mean, they really are a lot of fun to shoot, which is a benefit. The problem is, is that you're gonna be reloading a lot. And obviously having four more rounds in this gun than the Glock 43 is definitely a benefit. Um, and this one having seven rounds, you're just going to be reloading a lot with pretty much all of them. Uh, but this one, you can, you definitely get those few more rounds and it's a little bit more enjoyable at the range, but self-defense is where these guns shine. Obviously you want to shoot your gun a lot, your self-defense gun a lot. Uh, and that's just something to keep in mind. They all do a really good job, uh, when shooting. Now, side note, because I know it's going to come up. I have not had any problems with my P365. As a matter of fact, we had enough footage to really do this review uh, after a couple times going out, but we wanted to make sure that we shot this one again, put some more rounds through it, and made sure it did fine, and I still have not had a single issue. I did have the, uh, the primer or the striker drags on the back of the casings that I'm showing you right here, uh, but I still haven't had a single issue out of it, and I've been carrying this gun now for, for a couple months. All right, let me show you guys the triggers here really quick. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show you the weights, but you can go back and look at our original reviews to see the weights on them. Somewhere in moving, we lost our uh, trigger gauge scale. We'll have to have to find one or come up with another one, but let me at least show you how the triggers look. On the Glock 43, you do have that dingus right there. You hit the wall, a little bit of creep in the trigger, and then it breaks. This one does feel like the heaviest out of all the pulls. So it's not just like any other Glock you've ever shot. Uh, it is a little bit heavier. Reset, a little bit of creep, and it breaks. The shield, you have that hinge design, basically works the same way as the 43, just a little bit different in design. You hit the wall, 
nice clean brake on it. The reset, you hear that? That gets us every time on this gun. And it is a ghost reset, as I like to call it. That's the actual reset. Uh, this gun actually did start the M&P line. They started putting better triggers in their whole lineup after this gun, but that little ghost reset, that's the actual reset, okay? So it gets us, it will show us when we're flinching, and it has got me several times. And then the SIG, nice clean break all the way through. There's your reset. Very short travel on this gun. It doesn't come all the way back like these other ones do, but uh, each one of them has a decent trigger for smaller guns like that, which is uh, pretty cool. So pros and cons, let's start with the Glock. Pros, the small size weight uh, is fantastic. And, and really the size to weight capacity ratio has really been unmatched with Glock. With this one, I can't say that because this one is they're basically the same weight, but this one holds more rounds. Uh, but still, it's got a good size if you wanted a pocket carry or something like that. Uh, they've come down in price now. And if you just like Glocks, I mean, this is going to be a really good option. Reliability is uh, pretty much, you know, unmatched. I mean, I'm not a Glock fanboy by any, by any means, but uh, they've had their issues in the past. But really, Glocks in general, uh, for the most part, are very reliable. And that is obviously the best thing. Uh, the, mo the most important thing for any firearm. Uh, the MMP Shield, when it comes to value, none of these other guns really compare to it because you get lifetime warranty, Smith & Wesson, metal sights, two magazines, uh, just an over... It really has been the standard in concealed carry, and I think to this day, uh, it really is still uh, one of the top three, at least. I mean, that's why I'm showing you these. I, I could have tried to get any other ones that I that I wanted to but these three guns are just really uh, for concealed carry just some uh, just three of the best and and I definitely still put this in the top three uh, side note I'd go with the m2.0 if I haven't uh, been abundantly clear in this video about that <laughs> I think the upgrades that they've done are just amazing but uh, if you have one of these you know what I'm talking about it just it carries well it shoots well and it's a great value the p365 I think the uh, this 10 round magazines out of this gun is, is just fantastic, man. I really am impressed, still impressed with what they've done with that. The grip texturing on this one is my absolute favorite. Uh, it's really aggressive and it holds tight in your hand. These small guns, man, they like to move around a little bit. Uh, but I, I like the fact that this one has a great grip texturing all the way around. It feels great in the hand. And the sights on this gun are my favorite as well. Those x-ray sights just your dominant eye gets drawn to that green dot uh, and it, it's just a great setup now what about the cons okay for the Glock the Glock sights are definitely my biggest con on this gun I hate these sights um, if this was my gun which it's not I would replace those uh, immediately just not a big fan and really the the trigger this is the worst trigger on the table in my opinion that can obviously be be fixed easily but uh, it's the heaviest a uh, little bit clunky. I don't like it. And my groups open up a lot with the Glock 43 compared to the other two, I think. Um, but it still is a good shooter. Don't don't take that the wrong way. I really even shouldn't even mention that, to be honest with you, because for self-defense, these guns really do a good job. But it, it does have the heaviest trigger. Don't like the grip texturing too much and can't stand the sights. On the shield, we've kind of already talked about it. On this version, that Ghost Reset, not a fan. I don't like the safety on this one, but that, that was my choice when I bought it. Uh, the grip texturing sucks. It, it just sucks. That's it. Uh, the gun's great, but the grip texturing sucks. And some of the cons on the P365, it's got a pretty stiff spring in there, so if you have weaker dexterity in your hands, you may notice that. It takes a little bit more to get that slide racked back. Um, and then also, whenever you're carrying inside the waistband, although this is... A, more of a benefit than a con inside the waistband you definitely want to have a shirt in between your skin and this grip because it, it will rub you uh, raw for sure <sighs> other than that just not a lot of cons okay so uh, pros and cons on each one of these they all have them but uh, they all definitely uh, the, the, the pros on these guns definitely outweighs the cons now let's say you have enough money to buy any of these guns price is not a thing this is where it gets tough, man, because, you know, the P365 has only been out for a few months now. I mean, really, 
less than six months is what the gun has been out. It's, it's been out less than that, but uh, still, it, it's only been out a little bit of time. So for me to say that this gun is automatically better than these two with their track records, especially the shield, uh, it, that's really hard to justify. And I don't think a lot of people would really, you know, I'm not one to jump on a brand new ba bandwagon and just say something is automatically better. I like the features, I like the trigger, and I like the sights and the grip texturing better. I like the fact that it holds 10 rounds. Here's what I would say right now. I think these guns right here, I think the shield is still the standard. I, I, I really like the M2.0 and what they've done with it. Um, if that gun was on the table, I'd say that's the best one. The Glock, same way, great reputation on it and a lot of aftermarket parts. But I think this is now the standard. I think that Smith & Wesson Glock and all the rest of them that make great guns are going to go to this because they know now, hey, 10 rounds is the minimum for these little guns. And we're going to have to go to that. SIG has done an amazing job with this gun. I haven't had any issues out of mine. And I think right now, honestly, it is the best gun on the table. It has the best features, uh, but it also is the newest and time will tell. Right now, I like the P365. I just think it's fantastic. But these two guns right here are great. And I cannot wait to see what Smith & Wesson, Glock, Ruger, and the rest of them do uh, from here going forward. It's, it's really an exciting time to be concealed carrying a lot of great options. And give me any one, any day, and I will take it. So there you go. I want to know what y'all's opinion is. Make sure you leave me a comment down below. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.